Okay, and we're off. Uh, so let's see where these guys are off to. Um, they had 15 minutes to study the spoiler log and make notes and decide what they're going to do. And um, one of the most frantic things, I think, is just making sure you have uh, your early game route plans, like knowing where you're going to get your bombs and rupees and stuff from. So they're both starting at Sanctuary. We'll see uh, what they end up doing. Yeah, they're both making pretty much the same Kakariko you'd play you'd see in a normal blind rando run. But you do bring up a good point. Resource management is the big theme of the early game. And it can be, if you focus too much on the go mode items and you skip over which just have the bombs and rupees, you're gonna get burned eventually. But these guys are picking up rupees, picking up bombs. So the divergence. <laughs> They did get a hook shot. The blind tie has got it all. And that's pretty normal with five chests. Okay, so they've got three bombs. Uh, the question is, is that going to be enough for them to work with? Or are they going to want to buy some more, maybe? Or maybe there might be... I haven't had a chance to look at the poultry uh, prizes or the hoarder crab. But they do have that information available as well. Those prizes are trash, and we won't be seeing the poultries, or we might see the stun prize. I'll leave that a mystery for chat to speculate about in case it shows up. But All with right, an early I hook probably, shot, we might see it. I probably won't look at it, but yeah, so we saw flippers and the flute in the Kakarika well, and the runner's both going to activate the flute. Gonna allow them fast travel throughout Hyrule, and it's... Um, it's a good thing to make a beeline for if it's in a location you can immediately get into. Yeah, especially being right there in Kakariko, you walk like 20 feet to activate it. So, um, after Kakariko, um, do you have any thoughts on which spot they might be fluting to? I know exactly which spot they're fluting to, and I think chat will probably be able to guess why they're why they're doing what they're doing. Because you, you like the flute for overworld movement. But i show you. Well, actually, first it looks like he's going to buy some bombs. After he buys his bombs, I'll let him show you what's better than the, the flute for overworld movement. Uh, we have Sinet guessing six in chat, which is a pretty reasonable guess. Close. <laughs> but... Five is almost six. It's pretty close. But, it's actually on the complete opposite side of the world, but... <laughs> um, numerically. But Zelga's going right to... Right to Sahasrala's hut here. And... I'll spoil the fun for chat. He's gonna grab his boots out of the back here. Because why have just one item for overworld travel when you can have two? So one thing that kind of stands out to me is... I feel like if the early game plays are like super obvious, like there's this very obviously good item that you want here... Then there's going to be less divergence. If the plays are more obvious, then both players are more likely to take the same ones. Yeah. And the flu and the boots before four minutes, that's about as obvious of a play as you'll get in a spoiler log. We do have some slight divergence here, though. Quizball's headed up to the castle. Zelga's in Mini Moldworm Cave, and he's picking up a heart container, two heart container, and a power glove. Yeah, so we see we see on uh, on the trackers, um, Quizball should be updated soon, that... Um, both of uh, both Misery Mire and Turtle Rock require Ether to open. Uh, Quiz Bowl grabbed Quake out of Sahasrala's closet, but Zalga did not. Um, now this, um, we pretty much know for sure, because uh, we know what the medallion requirements are, that Quake isn't going to be needed for anything. But this is kind of a case of where um, different people take notes different ways, and some people might write specific chests down, whereas some people might um, opt to just remember the general area and clear most things in it. Yeah. The bright side for Quizbull is he's got this clearly insurmountable 20 rupee lead as a result of opening that third chest in Sahasrala's back closet. But 
Zelga went to one of those locations. You don't have to worry about noting specific chests when there's only one chest and it gives you the hammer. You also don't have to worry about last locationing the hammer here when um, you have the spoiler log, which is something that something that a lot of people would do if a hammer is in that location. I would probably do it. Anyways, take a sec point out. We saw the earlier divergence, well, slight divergence of Quizball headed up to the castle. He grabbed the blue mail. His file names before we started were Quiz Want Mail, so. He went and he took the free one right there. It's gonna cost him a little bit of time unless Zelda goes and grabs it later. But if it keeps him from dying later, then that's time well saved. Yeah, definitely. Uh, mistakes, um, costly debts are absolutely huge in spoiler turning because um, you don't have really luck on your uh, luck on your side to be able to catch up uh, or to be able to. Um, you know, save time on your opponent by guessing correctly, since everyone knows where everything is. Right. The time uh, crunch on putting together your route does create a little bit of potential to route better than your opponent, but there's no such thing as, I skipped Hera Basement and my opponent did it, and it didn't have anything. Or I did Left Side Swamp and my opponent skipped it, and it had my Titan's mitts, or... Yeah, there's no gambles like that in spoiler log. So Quiz is, um, he fell in a pit here. He's having a little bit of trouble uh, rescuing the old man. Um, I didn't I didn't get to see if there's anything on the old man, but um, probably... He's trying to use the hookshot to echolocate himself. I can't, I, I lost track of how far in he was, especially with Zelga going for Desert Palace instead, grabbing that lamp so he won't have the same issue when it comes time for him to save the old man. I think he's, like, he's fairly... Um, either he's really lost, or he's really close to the right wall. Okay, I hear Bass. I we have we do have his audio, so he's pretty yeah, close I'm, to the end. I'm, yeah, it looks like he's right about at the end there. So, yeah, there he is. Now we just gotta hope he doesn't get cabbaged or dead brocked with only one heart. Oh, oh, that's, that's scary. That's really unfortunate. Oh, that's... The good news is, well, I say good news. May not be good news, but I hope it's good news since he was able to get out once. He does start back in the dark room with the old man safe. This is like Farnsworth tier good news, I think. But anyways... Um... I, I have seen forfeits due to this before. But I think, I think Quizball has has found his route, he'll be out shortly. He got out once, he can do it again. Um, he's also... He, he's been in several of the tournaments, like... Um, yeah. I, after enough experience, um, you, you get to... Right. You get to be able to figure out what you're doing here. It's just... That, that dark room can be scary in Animizer. And I think Mercer and chat's calling it out, too. Oh, okay, so this is interesting, actually. So, uh, Zalgadison is, um, going to Lanmo. He's able to complete this dungeon because of the lamp being in Desert Palace. Uh, but Quizball went and got his, uh, bow from the old man first. So, Quiz is gonna have a bit of a better weapon to deal with, uh, the land molas. The hammer that Zalga's using is really hard to hit. It does do, um, the same damage as the bow will to them, so it'll be four hits each. But it's a lot harder to land those hits, and... He only has green mail, so uh, it is possible he could die in this fight. I've died many times doing a hammer fight for this. As somebody who spent a little bit of time trying to learn an MG, I strongly disagree with the assessment that the bow is a good weapon for this fight unless you have silver arrows. I can't stand <laughs> it. I, I would rather use the hammer here, given the choice. I've done uh, I, I've, I've done lots of both, and... Um, I guess maybe the bow benefits a lot more from prior practice than the hammer does, but I think the yeah. hammer is just awful. It's one of those things, I tried practicing it and it just never clicked for me. So... But the other thing to call out, alongside that bow, Quizball did unlock the save and quit spot if he ever finds himself wanting to do that, even though he has the flute. It's less valuable with such an early flute, but... You never know. Still, he might still want to use it, especially if you get stuck in the dark world without the mirror, for example. All right, so Zelga's going for that mail upgrade, which 
Might have done him a bit better to get before Blamo. Yeah, he didn't die, so it's fine. He didn't die, but you know, you might lose time being afraid of dying. That's a thing. Yeah, I suppose. But he's going for DM himself. He's gonna save that old man. He's gonna have a much easier time of it with the lamp. So, um, as for Dark World Axis, we have Hammer, we have Gloves, we're still missing Moon Pearl. Yeah, that's, that's not the one you want to be missing. Personally, I absolutely adore the bunny music, but we're not gonna, not gonna do very much with the bunny, so... Yeah, this is an inverted, uh, bunny applications are quite a bit more limited here. I think Entrance Randomizer has bunny logic built into it too, but I don't play that, so I couldn't, I can't speak for it. Yeah, it does have bunny logic for, uh, for cross-world entrance. So it can just have, like, very specific, um, stretches of Dark World you're expected to walk as a bunny. But so we see, uh, we see Zaga going to East Death Mountain. It looks like he's ignoring all of Paradox Cave. So this looks like a hero play. There are seven chests in Paradox Cave. Every single one of them is garbage today. So don't predict any items in any of them, chat, and don't call it Hype Cave. The sad part is I mentioned the bunny music earlier. By taking the east route up Death Mountain, which he had to do because no mirror, he bypassed the one place in vanilla that you actually get the bunny music. Seriously, they wrote such a good theme and they only use it in like one place and it lasts maybe three seconds if you know what you're doing. Yeah, it's too bad they didn't have like mitts and mirror or anything to uh, justify going through Super Bunny Cave um, without the Moon Pearl. Um... Definitely could have seen some um, uh, some Eastern Bunny action. And Quiz Bowl dropped the bomb strats. We did see that for Zelda. As far as I'm aware, dropping bombs there is actually an older NMG strat. Am yeah, I, it's am I crazy a. Or am I right? Or? It's a it's a strat that was used uh, for a brief time uh, from when. Um, Sahashala's rupees were still on the route. This was before um, tree pulls were understood and were able to man manipulate it for specific amounts of money. So, right. so you'd get the bombs uh, in the back of Sahashala and you'd be able to use the, your extra bombs to help with Lanmo. Uh, each bomb does the same as an arrow or a hammer hit would. So that's pretty helpful if you can get one in. It seems like a more beginner-friendly route, too, especially not having to manage your damage in the tree pole segment, which is, I've seen trip several people up. Yeah, so that that only saves um, four to six seconds, I think, and uh, it can cost a lot of time if you mess it up. But uh, I, I kind of wonder uh, where randomizer would be if we didn't have that understanding of how the tree poles worked, because we wouldn't be able to randomize them if we didn't know how they worked. I have a feeling Randomizer would have learned how they worked, but... And then that would have spread to NMG. But regardless, Quizball does take down Land Molas. He did resort to the hammer in the end, he ran out of arrows. That... You can see why I don't enjoy that fight. Oh, Zalga's doing hair abasement. <laughs> this is exciting. You don't, uh... I mean, you, you see, you see, Hera Basement plays um, or like calls on whether to do it or whether to not when there's an item in it. Often in the blind randomizer races, but knowing for sure that there's something here. Yeah, the good news is there is an item here. The bad news is you're sitting with invincibility frames for like forty seconds or something, just waiting. And it's the most boring thing in the game, aside from maybe watching the cutscenes in Swamp Palace.
Well, at least it's not too far off from its uh, vanilla location. Yeah, not at all. But still deprives us of funny music. But does let Zelda go to the Dark World. And it looks to me like he's going to be taking that Moon Pearl straight to Hype Cave. Which, unlike Paradox Cave, has the goods. So there is actually an item uh, in the in the Death Mountain area that um, they do need to get. Yeah, but, we haven't seen it yet. But uh, unfortunately, with their item set, they're not quite able to get it now, so they will have to go back a fair bit later. Similarly, there's at least one item we normally see that we won't be seeing at all this race. But I'll keep that one a secret for now. But Zelga, he he got the goods out of Hype Cave. Invincibility oh, yeah, I cane. There were two swords in there. <laughs> yeah, invincibility cane and the master sword. And he's going right back to Death Mountain. Um. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, not that much later, I guess. Uh, he's actually going to go get the item that I was uh, alluding to before, so we'll get to see what that is. Uh, but it's definitely required. Uh, now, it, another interesting thing about uh, swords in this seed, um, I'm just going to spoil this, there's a sword in Tile Room in Ganon's Tower, so... We're not going to see that, and I don't want to see them wait 40 seconds for something, so... I mean, we're probably uh, not going to see I'm it. I'm not going to shed any tears. might depend on where where the fourth sword is, but I don't know, we're, we're probably not going to see it. 95% of the locations in the game are more free than Tile Room. There's like maybe four or five, especially with this pendant layout, that are less free. This is a really interesting pendant layout. It, it, this would be like, um, this would be something I'd be super excited to play um, the, yeah. as a blind seat. I, I'm inclined to agree. It cuts out two of the longer dungeons in the game, including my least favorite Swamp Palace. So, but we did see Zelda grab the item you were alluding to. He lifts, and he's Which going to the... Conveniently, going to the rock portal. conveniently, this item opens the rest of Death Mountain. So, actually, that's a terrible location for Titans in a blind seed, because you'd probably be waiting on... Um, on... Well, probably Titans to come back here to justify being able to do anything else. It's a long walk to that Aether Tablet, and it was pretty much forced double dip in this sense. It was forced double dip, but in a blind seed, they surely would have checked it with the book they had like 30 seconds in. Oh, you're right. Okay. I haven't used that for that purpose in such a long time. I forgot that it did that. Uh, Quiz Bowl gets knocked off the peg there, but he'll he'll set it up again and no problem. Meanwhile, Zelga grabbed his mirror and he's off. He actually saved and quit instead of using it to go back to the light world, so he's off to the back sewers. That's the most convenient way to get it. And there's the one and only medallion we'll need today. And he got a 300 rupees, which... Um, that's really convenient for being able to open Palace of Darkness and not have to worry too much about costs for any other things that you might need. Yeah, like, want to buy a bomb upgrade before going into Ice Palace? You can do it. That's probably something I should think about more often. I almost never think about that. Um, buying the upgrades there. Honestly, they're more convenient for the refills than the upgrade, but it's just such a single, out-of-the-way location. Ice Palace is the only really good time to route it. Speaking of Ice Palace, I was just thinking that... Um, I say speaking of Ice Palace because it has three hint tiles in it, and sometimes in spoiler seeds I kind of wonder... Um, like, you can see the arrangement of the items with the spoiler log, right? But you don't know what the hint tiles say, so I kind of wonder sometimes um, what devious ways the hint tiles might actually 
lead a player astray if they were to play this blind, but we'll never know. Yeah, Quiz Bowl wants bombs. He needs two to get into the back of the hype cave. Tragically cannot afford the bomb vendor. Oh, okay, so yeah, those cost 100, and they, I think it gives you 30 bombs. I think okay. if you were to go one screen right and down, there's a there's a shop there that, that shop is... is only in the light world, and Quiz Bowl does not have the mirror. So he died <laughs> to get back to Link's house, go to the light world. He's going to farm the 50-50 rock instead of using that shop. I thought there was a shop in the, the house there, too, um, in the dark world. Maybe not. Maybe I'm confusing this with an entrance seat. <laughs> if there is, it does not sell bombs as far as I'm aware. I'm not going to say there's not one, but not one that sells bombs. Okay, well... And I think that's third try to get a get a bomb out of the 50-50 rock for Quiz Bowl, so somewhat unlucky there. But he'll that's... be able to get into Hype Cave with his two bombs now. That's good thinking, at least. Um, probably the quickest, like, 50-50 around. Although, actually, is there... Oh no, maybe not. I can't remember where all of the uh, all the bonk, the bonk rock bomb things are. The only bonk bomb I know is the one the fortune teller north of Kakariko. Actually, uh, there's the one in the dark world cemetery as well. But those are the only two I know. Oh, he's got some arrows from uh, the hype cave NPC, which. Um, I'm kind of wondering if this is a case of um, he's just opening everything here. Probably that, but those arrows, uh, him being so low, might come in handy. Yeah, and Hype Cave in PC in particular, you grab him while your bomb's exploding. He costs no time to grab. That's literally free. The only thing it does is it makes your stats at the end of the seed look slightly worse. Yeah. I, personally, for me, that's like good enough reason to not do it. But <laughs> um, so I'll go going through Thieves Town. All right, so let's see. Let's take inventory of um, what's in there. Um, what do you call it? Um, arsenal. Um, as far as dungeon completion, so they can do Palace Darkness. They can do Eastern. Thieves Town is being done. Um, Ice Palace needs Fire Rod or Bombos. Right. Meyer needs Kano Samaria, so we're looking for Fire Rod or Bombos, and we're looking for Samaria. Yeah, those are the only two items Zelda's looking for at this point. Quizball will be on parity with that once he grabs his mitts here, and then runs over and grabs his mirror. Well, Zelga does put blind down. That's going to be his third crystal. The remaining four are the ones we just discussed, that he can go clear two of them. Still needs items for the other two. Uh, yeah, so at this point, um, looking at this from like a viewer's perspective, so we, we know what basically what, um, what Zelga is able to immediately do so if he goes anywhere besides eastern and pod then we can probably figure that there's something good there right and of course we know what the goods are like he just grabbed bombos there which makes ice palace a valid option for him you know, even though we know what the goods are chat doesn't so we're gonna let chat keep speculating I, I know where some things are. I don't remember where everything is, so okay. I'm like I half do. blind. So, I'll let you keep speculating alongside chat. Um, I unfortunately do know where Samaria is because I did look that up. So I am, uh, I am, I'm in my my own little no mode here. Yeah. So the only item you're not aware of might be the silver arrows then, assuming Zelga wants to go grab those. Because those are perfectly skippable if you want to, but they are a decent time save if they're in the way. I think between Vitreus and Ganon, they're probably a good minute or two at least, just between those two bosses. To say nothing of Armos Knights, and, well, they have Tempered Swords, so Helmus War King's not a huge deal either way. Alright, so, um, I think we know where Samaria is now. 
Yeah, I think chat's probably able to piece this one together. Or at least, at least what the, uh, at least where a required item leading to it might be. It's one of those things. Chat loves talking about its fetch quests on the Master Sword pedestal, but when it's individual items and in locations, fetch quests are just lame. Give me my item and let me go already. Right. Fetch quests are kind of funny in um, in the spoiler races because it's it's just like it's this big extra step that just throws a complete wrench into your routing and it makes you look up more stuff. Yeah, like I saw a race the other day where the mushroom led to the Canis to Maria, and that was that was a route. Yeah, so uh, pretty soon when uh, Zalga gets the item that he wants from Swamp. Uh, we're gonna see whether um, uh, he's gonna be uh, uh, flooded with such a task. Yeah, I don't. I don't think it'll be a big deal though either way, because it's at this point it's perfectly linear. He's doing exactly what will lead him to the Cane of Samaria, and then after that it's just dungeon rushes plus or minus the silver arrows. And whatever other safety he wants to grab. So he's pretty clearly in the lead right now. Yeah. I think the, um, how the far converged. Yeah, pretty much converged. So I'm trying to think how far ahead is he right now, and um, kind of where did where did Quizball's main time losses come from? Uh, there's there's general execution which adds up uh, if if one player executes better than another that just tends to add up slowly over the course and of the that's, race. That's pretty much what happened in game one between these two as well. Like it's one one they had a little bit of difference at the start and they did a couple of different things in different orders. But then when they came back together, Zelgo was just clearly in the lead, and it wasn't necessarily because his route was better optimized or anything. He just had the cleaner execution throughout. Quizbull had the death in um, trying to uh, trying to take the old man out. That's the main thing that I remember that set him back. Yeah, that's probably a good... That combined with... His relative struggles with the echolocation with the hook shot in there. I guess that may have been on the order of 40 seconds to a minute. As Zelga kills Argus, gets his cane, does not pick up the pendant, just saves and quits straight out. Yep, I don't like need this. it. Not... Yeah. Skips the animation entirely if you don't need it. So, he's, he's going to beat the seed at zero pendants. Hey, the dream, man. No pendants actually required, technically. I mean, blue and red are never required unless the pedestal is, so... But yeah, aside from those time losses related to the old man, I can't really think of anything that... Quizbowl did significantly worse than Zelga to open this gap up, especially as far as routing goes. The one thing I may think of is he grabbed his armor super early. That was... Was that before Boots, even? Um... Quiz, yeah, Quizbowl grabbed it super early. Uh, I don't think it was... No, it wasn't before Boots. They both beelined for Boots. Okay, that's what I thought. But... So I think uh, like Quizbull grabbed it at a reasonable time. At the time that Zalgo grabbed it at, uh, Quiz didn't lose any time, uh, given where, given when he chose to grab it. Yeah, that's that's fair. The only difference in how they grabbed it was Quizbull saved and quit out, where Zelga left and fluted. But I think that's as long as you're fast on restarting your game, that's a push too with the walk out of the secret passage. Maybe slight advantage to the flute.
And we're seeing Kane of Burna strats against Blind for Quiz Bowl. Always love to see those because you just walk at him and it's free. It's literally free. And he releases the Golden Bee. <laughs> yeah, managed to get that out before grabbing the crystal, which if you're... You have to let it out so you can get some safety in there, and I'm sure he's probably wanting that just as a backup plan in case something goes wrong. Yeah, that's probably a good idea with um, the amount of hearts that you tend to pick up in, the, in these races. Yeah, seven with blue mail is not bad. Could be better still. It's really like, I, it's, I'd say it's a pretty good standard for these races. Um, it's relative it's like as comfortable as you can reasonably expect maybe red mail thrown in the mix but that's a bit less common right. you could very easily end up with like um only five hearts and uh maybe having to get heart pieces for your sixth and being stuck with green mail because both the armors are in an awful location yeah you get miserable seeds like that. You get miserable things like this vanilla big key in Misery Mire, which we'll call out. We didn't call it out at the time, but Zelga did pick up his silver arrow out of the lobby chest there. So he's got pretty much everything he could want to finish the game at this point, I think. Oh, yeah. Okay. So he's got silver arrows. So that means Vitreous is going to be pretty trivial for him. Right. Misery Mire is actually a real nice location for those arrows, considering that. Because I've, I've said it before on a couple other races, but I really do think that you want Silvers for, for Vitreous even more than you do for Ganon. Um, in Spoiler in particular, I think I would agree with that. Uh, Vitreous can be one of the scariest um, obstacles if um, good items for him are not available. Yeah. You can route yourself into Three Hearts, Fighter Sword, Hammer, Vitreous if you want to, but... You're not going to want to do that to yourself. And that's one of, like, I think Vitreous is the biggest stumbling block in spoiler races as far as safety goes. Even more so than Ganon, just because Ganon gets more practice for a lot of runners, especially the ones that play NMG. Right. I actually decided to low percent one of the, um, one of the qualifier seeds, uh, just for fun. And to, like, see what the lowest item count was. And it ended up having to do, um, and then it ended up having to do uh, four heart master sword vitreous, which was um, a regrettable use of my time. I will say that's a good word for it. <laughs> but that's what the fourth crystal for Zelda. Now that he puts his eleven arrows into vitreous, and just three more to go, and. You're not going to see any more than keys in any of these dungeons for checks, I don't think, unless there's a free heart container along the way. Oh, I forgot. Quizbull still has to get his uh, Canis Mario, so that's like basically yeah. that's basically two dungeons behind that puts him. So, yeah. Uh, Luckily, Swamp, since he's just rushing for Argus, is a relatively quick dungeon. But Meyer, you've got to sit through the cutscene chest for the big key, and it's just a pain. Um, so Zelga's lead is actually really, um, it's a really safe lead. Um, he can afford some, he, he can afford quite a few mistakes. Yeah, or going out of his way for an extra safety or two that he might not just, uh, beef up the consistency factor. I can't think of anything else that you'd really, really want here. Maybe powder. I don't actually know where that is, but... Aside from that, they're pretty. They're pretty set. Yeah, powder's available if he wants to grab it. Red mail is a little bit out of the way. I don't. I would be surprised to see him go for that at this point. I'm actually curious where it is now. It's, oh, that's it's where somewhere it is. in one of these dungeons he's going through. Um. It's not the worst location, but it's a. Uh, uh, 
actually, there was the... one more thing Zelga could have grabbed, and he already skipped in this very Palace of Darkness. He skipped the first chest. And that had a fun item in it. We'll see if Quiz Bowl grabs it. If not, we, if not, chat can learn what it is the hard way. So that chest is actually probably... It, it's the most isolated chest in Pod, um, with regards to other chests. Yeah, that's absolutely the case, but it's still a relatively quick check. But Zelga needs his keys. Uh, I think he needs to grab one more small key from somewhere to get to... And I'm guessing from his routing that that's going to be on the bridge, but I have not double-checked. Yeah, it's going to be on the bridge. I just checked. So he'll grab that key and he'll be off to the races to kill Helmus Sword King. Okay, so this particular item that's in uh, the shooter chest in Pod, I think that safety is actually. Oh, I like that. Um, <laughs> that's a that's a neat. Block punt uh, strats are the best. Shout outs to Zelda, and shout outs to the Turtle Room because that's like the only room where, I, or not the Turtle Room, the Chain Chomp Room. Because that's the only room where I feel like I ever see the normal. I'm actually. I'm pretty sure that doing that is way slower than playing the cane block to the south of the chest to hit the crystal switch, but... Yeah, um, but it's fun. And that's why we're here. Yeah. Uh, that's... Oh. I think I missed a memo. I, I, was, I was here to win. Maybe I... Came here. Well, okay, maybe you can be here to win. I, I'm just here to have fun. I'm not actually racing in this tournament, so... I'm just here to sit on my high horse, watch all these runners do things that... I'm not good enough to do, and have fun talking about it. Ugh, Quiz Bowl lost his key key, though. That's highly unfortunate. Oh. I think he thought he had sword beams and then didn't, if I'm looking at it right. I didn't quite see, but... Uh, so this first item in Palace of Darkness, actually, this safety... Um, I think it's a safety that uh, the usefulness of it is extremely diminished given their current item set. Yeah, but it's still fun. And it looks like Quiz Bowl's gonna go grab it, so Chad will get to see it. I'm actually kind of surprised he's grabbing this. But... Maybe he just control apps this automatically and didn't think about it too much beyond that. Yeah, there's our good friend Half Magic. Good for the Cane of Samaria, good for the Lamp, good for those medallions he's got. Not good for a whole lot else in this seed, but... Still nice to have in your back pocket. I think that's 64 uses of the lamp that he has now. That sounds accurate. And if it were me, I'd be using every single one of them. Also worth noting, Quizbowl did come to Palace of Darkness before going over to Misery Mire, despite going to Swamp for Samaria first, so he's on Wooden Arrows. Oh, that's true. I think Zalga killed Helmuslar with a silver. Can't remember. He, he did. And with Tempered Sword, it's very marginally faster than just slashing him or spinning him with the Tempered Sword. Um, but pairing pairing Pod with Eastern, uh, the Silvers are going to save a lot more time on Armos. So Quizbowl is, unless he wants to duck out um, and uh, change his routing here. Oh, okay, so that's where the powder was. Yep. But yeah, so Quiz, if he stays here doing the Pod Eastern combo, he's going to end up losing more time uh, using wooden arrows on Armos. Yeah, but that's only maybe three or four seconds if he gets the quick kill, the quick kill properly, and that's not an especially difficult. Kill. It's definitely, um, it's definitely more possible to mess up than the silver's mm -hmm. kill. That's true, and that goes back to what I was I was saying earlier. Zelga might continue to grab a few safeties just to up his consistency and make it a safer run, and it's the same thing there. Silvers are absolutely a consistency item, even though compared to perfect play, their time save isn't that big. Like, I think it's, what, 30 to 40 seconds against Ganon, and 
maybe five or ten against optimal vitreous strats. It's like yeah, I guess it's not that it's not that time saving against um, doing tempered spins on vitreous, for instance. But it depends what else is available before you go there. And in general, with these low health counts that you see in spoiler races, the tempered damage boost strats against Vitreous are super dangerous. Like, I think seven hearts is the bare minimum to attempt that, and then you've got to do it almost perfectly. But we uh, do see... I think you can do it with six, or... I think you can do it with five if you're, like, really... If you if you get them really tight, but it's really easy to take an extra heart. Okay, you can tell that I am very far from a perfect player, even at my best. So, oh yeah, we still haven't done Ice Palace. No, but Ice Palace is the dungeon that you can clear without opening a single chest, so... I think, yeah, it's the only such dungeon in the game. Well, no, that's not true. Skull Woods is also a thing. My apologies. But, because of that little quirk of it, it literally really does not matter when you route it, aside from the efficiency factor. Like, there will be better and worse times, but... Actually, really, in this particular seed, when you get the flute at a minute, and it's a flute to aid away, you can literally do it whenever you want. Yeah, the other factor, uh, aside from just having your best sword, that's a, is gonna be, like, um, when do you have full magic? So it's going to be good to do, like, right after another dungeon, basically. Yeah, that's a factor to consider. Although I did call it out at the start of the seed that we might see the sun prize. It doesn't look like we have. In this particular seed, that is a full magic jar. Um, we did technically see it uh, on Quizable's end, actually, a bit in Thieves Town. Oh, it was did more we? because... Sorry. Uh, it it wasn't because he wanted it. It was more because... Um, he just wanted to stun enemies that were in his way. Okay. It, it, it did show up. It's half yeah, magic. I, or the full I magic. That then. My apologies. I was going to so, comment yeah, on that, this... but we got, talking to, we got talking about other stuff. Yeah, it happens. But that, that factor does mean that in this seed, Ice Palace was a literally whenever you want to. And in that case, given the relatively high level of danger associated with it, both the boss and everything else, like this room, for example. Which, Zelga makes a fool of me, clears it out in one spin. But regardless, Ice Palace is generally considered to have a high level of danger. So doing it towards the end when you've got the rest of your safeties in your pocket, probably a good idea if it's not an efficiency loss. I like that, like, turnaround hookshot thing that he tried to do with the giant spike trap. I think he... Wanted to avoid the knockback from that. There's a few ways to do that. Um, you can slash your sword at the same time it hits you as well. Yeah, you, I've seen people use the hook shot and actually be able to walk far enough north and use the turnaround hook shot strat just to get iframes through that and not take damage and not get knocked back. But that's one of those real tricky strats. And that's almost a perfect six slashes keep cold stare in the corner. Gets out after the fifth, but he's able to still clean it up. His stupid falling ice pellets gave cold stare an assist there. I blame Bombos for this, honestly, because um, if he would have had Fire Rod to use for, the, um, for melting the ice, um, it puts the falling ice on a better cycle. Oh, I feel like I've noticed that before and never really thought about it. But yeah, that's a thing because ice isn't falling during the Bombos animation. Yeah, I'll actually like, I'll actually walk like one, like half a tile 
before I use Bombos because it puts the falling ice on the slightly better part of the cycle. That makes sense. Oh yeah, so Zelga's got all seven crystals, and um, there's a little game that some people here like to play, uh, which is uh, guess where the big key is in Ganon's Tower. Now, um, we can't be guessing... We can't really be guessing numbers, because it's probably just going to be one or two. Um, but if anyone wants to shout out specific locations that they think it's going to be in, feel free. Yeah, chat's welcome to do that. I'm not going to do that, because I obviously have the spoiler log. But my guess... When I don't have the spoiler log, is always the bottom left of the rando room. So chat's free to run with that or think that I'm trying to mess with them because I know where it is and it may or may not be there. Guess also a reminder that I spoiled the fact that there's a sword in tile room, so it's not in tile room. Oh, yeah. Sinek. Actually, I don't know if you were here when we said that at the start of the race. But our uh, admin Sinax saying the big key is always in the tile room. And being wrong like he is 21 out of 22 times. Sword leads to GTBK when we already have three swords. That would be pretty hype though, I gotta admit. That would that would be... Um, I, I, I do honestly... I, I would like to see um, a double dip GT in at least one of these. But yeah, so um, our our missing item that uh, we usually see, but we did not miss seed so far, was the fire rod. It's okay. We didn't see the ice rod either. That's yeah, but that that's that one's more common, at least. Yeah, it's being a pendant. every time T rocks a pendant, we don't see that. But yeah, fire rodless seeds are actually. Not common. I think I only ever played one myself. And yeah, we're seeing... Actually, we're going to see some interesting... We're going to see Zelga pull out the lamp strats for the torch rooms once he gets past the gauntlet up here, because he has to. And I think Mercer in chat laid out the most likely scenario for a double dip GT. So, yeah, that scenario that you laid out with Kane Lock, Big Key, and Kane behind something in GT is very possible. Well, I, I say very possible for some value of very. It's a legal combination for sure. It's made for some of the most exciting um, bracket matches of, uh, like, of the regular randomizer, actually. Oh, the the other the other thing uh, that could force it is uh, needing boots for the torch. Yeah, and if we're talk if we're not talking about the big key specifically, needing bow for the upstairs can be a thing too. Ah, uh, yeah. Although there is a there is a more recent way to actually skip that, clip the mimics into the wall, get them off screen. I know that that's a minor glitch in this tournament, but I'm still going to pretend it's not a thing. I Mimic still don't know are... if I plan on learning it or not. It's... Mimic clips are too close to major glitch for my taste, so... Well, it's, it, it's, it's okay if it's not a link that's clipping. You can't you can't enforce like everything in the game. Like, look, look that fireball just like kind of looked like it was clipping the wall. Are you going to ban that? Yeah, let's ban that. <laughs> all right, all right. So, <laughs> um, anyways, Kane of Burna strats. That half magic actually coming in nicely for Quizbowl, letting him get his six slashes on each of these cold stair puffs. No, he's not going. He's not going to use even half of it. He didn't need the half magic. He would have used more than half if it didn't lag, but it lagged, and that reduced his magic consumption. Anyways, right, so we're seeing the torch strats from Zelda with just the lamp. You normally want to light that bottom torch with the fire rod, which Zelda doesn't have, so he had to use the lamp. 
Yeah, so good on him for remembering to actually walk down there, because it's really easy to forget. And then oh. we see the lamp being able to go just ever so slightly past the one tile. There's a super old strat that uh, uh, we used to use in NMG, uh, where we, we used to use the lamp on those torches like seven, eight years ago. We used to use the lamp on those instead uh, before like magic rerouting was like, hey, fire rod's actually better. Um, and I think one strat was to like bonk over one of the sparks as it was uh, coming to you, where you had. Um, yeah, the floor crumbling away from me on the other side. I think I've seen that strat before in Rando. It, it definitely rings a bell. It sounds cool, though. Anyways, we've got Quiz Bowl going into Meyer, which will actually be his seventh crystal. And while Zelga's headed up into the Aghanim 2 fight, let's see how cleanly he can get it. Okay, Quizful using Ether, making sure to do it when the Wizards are fully spawned, so that cleaned up the rest of the room nicely. Uh, Zelga used Ether in a couple of rooms of the Gauntlet as well, which is um, a pretty good strategy for safety if you're lower on hearts than you're used to. Yeah, I was thinking Quizball's got the half magic, so he's taking full advantage of it. I like it. Meanwhile, Zelga did have to do an extra cycle on Agatu because he ran into the thing where if you hit two balls on the same frame, it only counts as one. So he lost a cycle, had to do an extra one because of that. A little unfortunate. You know what's even better than that is when um, when you hit Aghanu, uh with the energy balls and it knocks him inside the wall so that when he's casting his own, he fires it into the wall in front of him because he's actually inside the wall and you don't get to use it against him. That sounds even less fun than the desyncs I've seen. It's basically a byproduct of desyncs. Alright, so it's all good going for the one and one. Um, I think he only... Did he miss... He missed something. I'm not sure if he got the trident spin or not. Uh, he didn't get the trident spin at the very start. Okay, well, it's trapped between the wall and uh, and Cannon's back, so that allows for some really easy double spins to clean up phase two really quickly. Yeah, uh, does use the Cana Burna to avoid getting hit by the fire bats. The wall meant he didn't have really a lot of room to do the usual dodge tracks when you're inside the circle. But at the same time, he doesn't have the fire rod, so he's still got, like, probably 18, 20 uses of the lamp. All right, yes, we did find the arrows in uh, Misery Mire. Actually, is Quizbull? Is Quizbull not getting the arrows? Yeah, it looks like Quizbull did skip the arrows. I can see on his head at the top that it's still the wooden arrows. That is interesting. I wonder if he overlooked them or if it was a contest decision. Meanwhile, Zalga taking down Ganon with those silver arrows that he got. All right, so he's going to clean up this set to nothing. And he will advance to face me. <laughs> yep. And he finishes with a final time of 50 to 40 seconds. Get your GGs out, folks. And yeah, we see Zelga in chat with his own GG. Good run, man. And now not only do we have Zelga in chat, we have him here in the voice with us for an interview. How you doing? How are you feeling after that run? Uh, feeling pretty good. Uh, little time losses here and there, but I'll take it. Um, I'm just happy to move on. Yeah. 53 minutes is not that much slower than any of your qualifier runs, and those were good enough to get you a number three seed. And you had all the time in the world to practice those, so I'd say a good run. Thanks. Um, I definitely would say that the spoiler qualifier format definitely benefited me over something like an uh, actual live spoiler race with the 15 minutes. So I feel like I'm slightly overseeded, but 
all in all, I mean, I can't complain. I'm I'm really happy with how this has gone so far. So I'm just looking forward to uh, getting bodied by a commentator soon. <laughs> I was going to say, you probably aren't going to be uh, too happy once you get the spoiler log for our first race. Oh, man. Just what what have the seeds been in the past? And just think of all the crap that's been spit out by this bot and just V30 in general. Th this is going to be a disaster, man. The good news about disasters is that you can at least route them semi-properly instead of last locationing everything. That's some small consolation, I hope. There, 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 was, there was one race we had in the fall tournament that was um, that was amazing. It was the only one that I won between us. Um, and I won because uh, I isolated Graveyard Ledge and Bombos was there, and Bombos opened Pendant Mire, so he went to clear the full thing. <laughs> and that was the only reason I won. Man, death to hints, man. It was the Spec Rock hint told me there was a unique item there. And oh, I yeah, and skipped. I skipped that hint, too. I always skip yeah. that hint. Oh, man, that was rough. Was that unique item, the single arrow? So that's a great example of things that are not going to happen uh, this time, but uh, I'm sure we'll have different adventures. Uh, one thing I want to ask is, um, is there a reason that you routed in the uh, blue mail so... I guess relatively late, like you got it after Lambo. I was debating skipping it entirely, and I just decided that after Landmos took forever, because I should have put that off until I had something better like Silver Arrows and the bow, but I was just there, so I was like, I'm just going to do it. But I was just kind of, well, the way it went, it was kind of slow, and I kept getting hit by rocks. So like, let's just be safe. Let's make sure that we're not going to die to something dumb later. So I, that's why I routed it after the fact. Okay, yeah, because I was, uh, I guess I was kind of wondering if it was influenced by the race itself or whether it was like something you planned before but forgot about or whatever. But that makes sense because um, that Lanma fight was kind of, um, it could it, it could have gone poorly. It's really difficult with a hammer. Yeah, I I'm awful at the whack-a-mole strats with the hammer. I'm, I'm never in range, and then I get hit by a rock when I am. So that's something I gotta practice, but... I, it, was, it was kind of fun throwing the bombs out, at least. It's so hard, like, um... Like, whenever I have Lion Mo and I have Fighter Sword or Hammer... If, sorry, if I have Fighter Sword and Hammer, I will just pretty much default to Fighter Sword, because that's faster for me on average. Yeah, I could believe it. I I think I probably would have had a faster fighter sword fight, yeah. Meanwhile, I said it while you were in the fight itself, but I will take whack-a-mole strats over a lot of other potential low percent land mo strats, including the regular NMG bow strat that Quizball used. Oh man, I am so bad at normal arrow land mos. I I'm a rando runner. I don't have time for that NMG stuff, man. Same. But, like, that but, is one thing that Rando does not teach, in, one thing in particular. Um, another thing is, like, um, Bow and Master Sword Strats and Aga Tower, I would say. But it's like, if you don't run vanilla, no major glitches, you probably won't know how to do those fights very well. They take a lot of, like, specific practice. Yeah, I, I think I'll probably end up doing some NMG in near future, but it's something like this tournament. Uh, NMG runners are going to have the major experience because they are already going to know like the optimal room strats for most cases. And then I guess rando, you might have a different item equipment set, but with amount of experience that most rando runners in this tournament are going to have, it's, it's probably almost negligent as far as the difference. You can kind of make it up in your head. Well, I know what the optimal is in NMG. What's it going to be with this inventory set? And it's probably not going to be overly different. Um, if you run both, uh, in general, like even outside of spoiler, then um, then you're going to have um, made a lot of those connections already. So, um, like, it, it, there's some people in this tournament who have definitely they might have done uh, vanilla once or twice. They definitely primarily do rando, and it's kind of um, it's interesting to see how they stack up because a lot of them have. Um, they, they have a lot of resourcefulness on their side, and that's one of the things that's really exciting to see in this tournament. Right. It's like, those of us that play a lot more rando than NMG, 
and blind runs are able to get by with better routing, better gambles a lot of the time, but this knocks that out of the picture, so that resourcefulness you mentioned is the only weapon those guys really have. And then meanwhile, shoutouts in chat. I think ACMLM was in chat earlier. He might still be. If I recall correctly, he actually has the fastest NMG time of anybody in the tournament. I could be wrong, but I am like 80% sure that's the case. I think you might be right. Yeah, I, I could believe that. It's been a while since I looked at the leaderboard, but I, I would guess that maybe. I know Actually, Gerdo I tell a lie. Too. It's Gerdo. Yeah. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, yeah, you're right, for sure. I forgot about Gerdo. But um, ACM is second, and his NMG time is only about 30 seconds behind. So, pretty close. Yeah, Ooh. the, the execution on these runners is insane. And, that, I mean, it's, it's going to show in this tournament who the real execution monsters are. And in some ways, that's why I'm... Uh, the next match is going to be pretty rough on me, I think. There's always, um, I mean, possibility for maybe judging your judging your limits poorly. Like, I think that's the main cause of deaths in a spoiler setting is when, like, maybe you try and push something too hard, um, skip too many safeties, and you get bitten for it. So that, that, that could be a thing that could happen to maybe even out some of the matches that are going forward. Um, I think it's less likely to happen um, with uh, larger skill disparities, but as we get further in the, further in the tournament, uh, even if one player is, uh, definitely has an edge in execution, um, all it might take is a death for that to go away. Yeah, when you find yourself doing like four or five heart trinecks with the master sword and hammer and stuff in these tournaments, and it it can happen to anybody. That's definitely for sure. Oh, nice collection rate, forty eight. Yeah, I'll take that. Nice under fifty. That's. I don't know if I've actually ever had under fifty before. I'll take it. Yeah, I think um, the. Uh, uh, I feel like the the no fire rod required and maybe no T rock required helped a lot here. Yeah, definitely. It it's been a long time since I had a rodless seed. Like I know the the ice rod was kind of available, but way too far out of the way. But the the use case for that was just non non existent. Well, there was there was land mo. <laughs> That's true. I. I actually could have had that if I wanted to uh, go into the Uncle Armor and grab that before Landmo. Maybe I could have, because uh, I'll just go ahead and spoil it was in a Zelda cell. Shout outs to casual strats, by the way. It's pretty far out of the way. Okay, so I, I've got another question. Um, and I already forgot it because I thought of it a minute ago. Um, oh, yeah, so. There is a sword in tile room. Uh, can you think of any situation beside any situation where um, you might have wanted to grab that, like kind of in, in a vacuum? Let's say, let's say another seed has a sword in tile room. Uh, what would it take to make you grab that sword? Um, maybe if. The other sword was behind Ice Armos, I might consider. And like on the path, like the compass room or something had a sword and I didn't have silvers. And so like that was going to be my tempered silverless instead of master silverless. I, I, I might do that. Quizbowl, unfortunately, having a little bit of trouble with the torch rooms. The door shut on, shut on him in the first room, and he took a fall here in the second one from the sparks running around. But I think he'll have it this time as long as he gets... Ooh, can't stop himself to get the extension on that. Oh, that is... That's, uh, that's, it's trickier than it looks, especially when you haven't practiced it. 
it, it's really awkward. The, num- the number of times you come up here without the fire rod outside of something like entrance is so low that unless it's something you're kind of used to, it, it's awkward. I'll say I'm used to it because in the GBA version of this game, the lamp does damage. I'll leave the rest to your imagination. Oh, so that's what you were talking about when you said that you'd uh, you'd want to use the, the Half Magic 64 uses of the lamp. Yeah, but I'd do that even in SNES just because I like the sound effect too. The sound effect is kind of nice. It, it's, it's one of my favorite things to do um, when like running out your magic for uh, fake powder. It's just satisfying for whatever reason. Right. And also, Fake Powder, shout out to that being my favorite safety that we'll probably never see in the spoiler tournament. But it I would think be we've really, seen it really a couple cool times. I think we've seen people grab mushrooms for uh, seemingly no reason for that. Yeah, I, I've seen the mushroom grab for it a couple times. I actually, I think in the first race between these two, Quiz Bowl actually did it. But I've never actually seen it used for Fake Powder as a safety. Yeah. To be fair, I've only seen that like three times ever, and two of them were in NMG. And both of those were fake, fake powders. That just the runner just happened to have no magic. Okay, yeah, that kind of that kind of doesn't count as much. No, but I still really want to see it. I had one log where the bow was on the bat and powder itself was in Mimic Cave. So that was one. I didn't actually run the race, but when I was routing it, I was like, let's just do fake powder here. Yeah, that sounds like a place where you'd want to do it. Anyways, Quiz Bowl's got Aghanim 2 down. He'll be going into the Ganon fight here. He still has no silver arrows, so we'll be seeing the silverless strats from him, but... Shouldn't be that long before he's done. I really need to ask him about that. <laughs> well, Why judging he's... from SRL chat, he saw uh, he said GG in SRL chat about a minute and a half before, or a minute before Zelga finished, and that was when he was in Misery Mire. I'm willing. I'll ask about it, but I'm willing to wager he made a conscious decision not to pick that up when he decided the race was over. Oh, interesting. Yeah, maybe. And that's just one of those small things that goes back to, we saw Zelga in Twitch chat a couple times, but these guys, they're perfect. There's no problem them paying attention to each other's runs and hanging out in chat. As long as it doesn't, as long as it's not to the detriment of their own run, of course, that would be bad. It's so easy to lose focus doing that, though. I, I feel like these races require such an intense amount of focus. Right. But... So, unfortunately, Kozbol taking a gain in death um, was using Burna quite a bit, but didn't happen to have it out at that particular time. So that fire bat was able to burn him rather badly. Yeah, and he takes the trident hit there, which I think with blue male fire bats are only two damage, so he can take a hit as long as it's not a hug, but it's still he's gonna be walking a tightrope if he takes another. These are these are three damage, um, with blue male. Oh, are they? I must be thinking of the phase three and four fire bats then. Yeah, which is so weird to me why that they do less damage. I don't really know why, but I'm, I'm thankful for it, for sure, but <laughs> it doesn't make a lot of sense. I do love how much lag uh, Canaverna creates here, though. I mean, have you ever played online games that lag before? Same story, take advantage of it. I, just, I, don't, I don't actually play modern games. I don't remember the last time I played anything that was released later than 1999. I guess in this specific case, I'm thinking I played fighting games with my friends online sometimes back 10, 12 years ago, and they couldn't handle the lag, but because I wasn't actually good at the game, I could do it. Yeah, that's a bad fall for Blizzball, though. 
I think we'll probably see if he heals himself before going back in, because he's only got the one heart. Yeah, but there's a fairy right here in this tree, so he might grab that. No, he's mirroring. He might go by potion. Yeah, at this point, with your bottle empty, there's no real reason not to go by potion and just guarantee you'll finish it out. I like how he's got the portal placed, basically, like on the castle bridge. So it's it's kind of like a like a pseudo Aghanim portal. Where else would you put it? I, I sure wouldn't want it anywhere else. All right, so I think this is take three for him. Yeah, first he had the death, second time was the fall, and I think the third time will be the charm. Oh, he gets hit by the trident trying to um, trying to have his sword out uh, to prepare for maybe a double spin after Ganon landed. Yeah, the greed strats are always the deadly ones against Ganon, as he... Tries to greed to get inside the center of the fire bats and takes two hits as a result. Yeah, two hits in quick su su succession like that. That word has too many S's and C's. It, two hits like that, it sucks because when you go out of your way to get a potion, you know you have one and you kind of don't get a chance to use it. You have to decide to use the potion. You have to decide, okay, well, I'm one hit away, or I'm one and a half hits away, or whatever. Might as well use it now for the safety. It's not automatic like a fairy is. Um, but then there are bad judgment calls where it's like, okay, well, I don't think I need the potion here. I don't want to waste it. And then you end up wasting it. Yeah, in this case, I think he's actually out of... Yeah, he, he got out of the first two phases without taking a hit this time. Which is actually pretty good, because after he took that death, he jumped back into the fight with only six hearts, instead of the full nine he had the first time. Yeah, and his, uh, his Ganon patterns and Firebat patterns are all, all messed up from before. Well, I think we'll see the torch glitch from him here, yep. Just a little bit of spam, no problem with that when you got the lamp. And he'll start on his silverless. That's one, and this will be two out of the 12 he needs. Oh, that's a, that was a really fortunate um, timing for Ganon to land from his teleport. He's able to light the lamp just as Ganon lands. You kind of can't control that as well with the lamp, whereas uh, you can control it a bit better with the fire rod. Oh, he actually spins into a fall there? Did, did something happen? Did I miss something there? Or did he just spin right off the ledge? Yeah, that just like, basically if you if you aren't ready for that to happen and you aren't holding away from the ledge, that can happen really easily. If you hold a direction away from the ledge, you're completely safe. Uh, so it's kind of like the thing where if you're holding your sword out, like basically the knockback from a spin. Um, it cancels your spin animation, so you're able to move it again, but it still acts as if you had your sword out. So, like, so like kind of the same way that um, the spin attack setups to line yourself up for bomb jumps works. You can't fall off if you're holding away, but... And I guess in this case, he just was not expecting the knockback to send him off the edge. Yep, exactly. Oh, that trident almost got him on the way back, too. I feel like it's really easy to tilt on Ganon in situations like this. Um, yes, you, I can, you die I can personally, personally confirm. Like, you die, so you lost time, so you kind of want to 
it just subconsciously you kind of want to try to make it back up and do it faster the next time. Like my first ever SRL race for randomizer, I had eight falls on Ganon for basically exactly that reason. But we're back on phase three here, so just a couple more hits and we'll be back in the, the silver list. This is honestly good practice though, like, so um, what you were talking about earlier with him maybe deciding to skip silver is because he knew the race was over at that point. Um, it, it, I think it is turning into pretty good practice for him. Yeah. And silver list traps are always fun, because they're different and the fight's not over in four seconds. But for the most part, in my experience, this strat is just all about finding a rhythm and staying in it. Yeah, one really important thing about Silverless is uh, baiting the Firebat um, correctly in, in like the kind of the safest way you can. There are ways of doing it. Uh, he's actually doing quite a good job with that, um, I will say. Uh, but, but yeah, there, there are ways of um, doing it. Sort of, sort of kind of like a knight's movement in chess in some places. Uh, right. To where you actually get quite a big window uh, to be able to spit in. Yeah, and I think if I was counting correctly, that was his sixth or seventh. So just a few more. These are, these are these are really good fire bat baits. <laughs> like I'm I'm really impressed actually. Yeah, you can tell he's put in the work to get this phase at least for sure. It was just that one unfortunate spin earlier that I don't think he was expecting the knockback on. And I think this will be the last one. Yes, it is. So get your GG's in chat for Quiz Bowl. And he finishes with a 117.05. So. GG's. Uh, we'll see if he wants to join us in chat here. Yep. In, the, in the booth. Yeah. Hey, Quiz Bowl, GG, man. GG, thank you. Yeah. I, I, that, was, I, that scene was so great, I didn't want it to end. You were enjoying that Ganon fight, I hope. Oh yes, that was that was wonderful serverless practice. I mean, we were actually you were doing those firebat dodges on that last fight really well. We we were impressed by that. You've clearly put in the time to get that phase of it. Yeah, yeah. So it was just uh, it was just getting to that point. I'm not as practiced doing it uh, blue mail with uh, that few hearts. Uh, just realizing everything does three hearts of damage means I can only take three hits. Right, and at that point, it's just you have to balance out the greed versus actually getting it done. Yeah, that's uh, that. That is a good point. So, is that why? I, I guess just to confirm, is that why you uh, chose to skip the arrows in Meyer? Um, actually, that was uh, that was a. Uh... A mistake on my part. Uh, I, I think that was around the time uh, Zelga was finishing up. That was my last dungeon, and uh, I kind of saw him finishing, and I just it completely slipped my mind. They were on my list of things to get, and I just completely bypassed. Them. I realized, like right before I got into Vitreous fight, I'm like, wait a second, I was supposed to grab those silvers, but it's like, oh, too too late now. Yeah, thought it may have been related to that. I was actually speculating that it may have been an intentional move on your part, just to show off Silverless because there's no loss in doing so. And it's honestly a fun fight, in my opinion. Yeah, it, yeah, it is It is a fun fight. So, um, I mean, yeah, it just, it's just a shame I couldn't quite get it the, the first couple of times. So, um, but at least I, I got it eventually. So I'm happy about that. Yeah. And then the rest of the seed, you had a Land Molas fight. You want to talk about that? I did have a Land Molas fight. Uh, next, next topic. <laughs> Good answer. Uh, uh, I, know. I have about as high of an opinion of NMG Landmola's fight as you seem to, so... Well, without Good any job sword. Talking. 
I, I've yeah. never done uh, Lamolas with just the hammer, so that's why I wouldn't, wanted to go up and grab the bow, because I thought, well, maybe I can grab that and get a little safety, and then without a sword, it's a little harder to navigate those dark rooms, and that became an issue as well. <laughs> yeah, those cabbages are kind of rough, especially dealing fixed damage. You, oh, had, I think I got... you had the hookshot strats, but... Yeah, I think I, I think I got uh, hit by those dead rocks at least six times a seed. I was I was really frustrated by them with them by the end. Yeah, I think I keep citing Vitreus as the most difficult thing in Link to the Past. Dead rocks are probably way up there too, though. Yeah, pretty high on the list. Oh well. Uh, so on the on the topic of silver stole, I think uh, like what Zaga ended up doing with his route was uh, he ended up doing Meyer uh, quite a bit earlier. He had silvers for Pot and Eastern, so um, I think like they it would have been better to route them in there. So I guess um, at the time I had been wondering um, maybe why you didn't do that instead because like you 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 said that um, you had forgotten to grab the silvers while you were in Meyer, but. Um, I guess had you not thought about um, getting them for Armos or whatever? Yeah, I mean, I would have saved some time there. I was trying to play it a little bit safe. Um, if the pod in Eastern is a bit easier uh, with uh, with fewer hearts, and usually I like to try and knock those out a little early before trying to uh, go to the more difficult dungeons where everything you know hits like a truck. So uh, that's kind of why I wanted to put it a little later, and I didn't think I was going to lose that much time. But I did watch on the restream. Zalga did that first, and. You know, he did save some time over me by doing it that way. A perfectly respectable decision to do the dungeons that you know you can safely do in a format like this that prioritizes danger so much. Exactly. I've been working on you know kind of low heart strats, and I've, I've gotten to where I can do some of the uh, some some of the dark world dungeons on low health. But uh, Meyer and Turtle Rock are one of the tougher ones. I was happy to see that uh, we didn't have to dip into Turtle. You didn't have to pick up the fire rod at all, even, which yeah, that threw me. An interesting thing to see. Yeah, I've never done that upper torch room without the fire rod, so uh, so I was I was learning new strats on the fly. Here, I'll I'll teach you another strat. I mentioned this earlier, but fire up the Game Boy Advance board of this game. Use the lamp as your primary weapon. That'll teach you the strat. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, it's just it. You got to get as close to the edge of, on that second torch room, and it extends just slightly out beyond the one tile. Yeah, I remember hearing someone say that it extended one tile, but uh, I tried that exactly once, and when I fell off, I was like, okay, I got to figure out a different way. I'm not going to figure out exactly how far that this thing's going to reach. Right. Those torch rooms are tricky to begin with, even with normal fire rod strats. They're tricky, but. When you can't use the strats you're used to in there, suddenly the difficulty level skyrockets. Exactly. So, you are eliminated from the tournament now, Quiz Bowl. Um, uh, but that being the case, uh, how do you feel about uh, the spoiler format for races in general? Like, do you, do you enjoy it to the point where you'd still keep doing them? Like, maybe the dailies or whatever, or... Um, yeah, I think you know I, I enjoyed uh, the, the the spoiler format. It is a little bit more execution um, based than uh, than the standard um, ram randomizer format, and I do a little better in those just because it's about kind of routing efficiency. Uh, here, where you know everything, uh, the execution becomes a bit more important. And one of the uh, one of the things I'm trying to do is work on my execution. So I, I enjoy being part of the tournament. Uh, I'm I'm happy to have just qualified, uh, even though I, you know two races and out here i'm i'm perfectly happy with uh, with that uh, so ggs to zelga and uh good luck to uh, i think both of you you guys are facing off in the next round right yep <laughs> yeah uh, and ggs uh th this was fun and both of these seeds had a a unique dumbness to them like for example the rods this one this time so yeah the, these are weird situations that we got thrown into so it's certainly not easy to try and figure out new situations in a spoiler race exactly so it was fun to participate in and uh, now i'll have some fun uh, just sitting on the sidelines uh, watching everyone else and uh commentating on everyone else's race right speaking of we do have a race on this very channel 
It, I think it's scheduled for five minutes for now. I think it got pushed back slightly for some yeah, reason. Yeah, I sorry. think you're actually going to be on the call for that one, right, Quiz? Yes, yes. I'll be uh, I'll be pick, picking up some commentary for that, along with uh, who is my cook comment. Uh, Mercer, it looks like, who's been in. Mercer, that's where most of this run. So. Oh, that's funny. All you get the to guys start. that are in chat <laughs> right funny. now, stay right here. If you want to see that, it's going to be F. Coughlin, commonly known as Fred, versus Pizza Pals. All right. Well, again, thank you guys for uh, commentating. Uh, thanks, guys, for tracking. Thanks again for to Sinek for setting this all up. I had a great time. Yep. Mm -hmm. So I think uh, follow the runners definitely uh, put on a good show for us. Um, the various things that they managed to pull off. And then shout outs also to our tracker tonight, who was Dimensive keeping you guys keeping all the little icons down at the bottom of the screen lit up so you guys could tell how the race was going being active in chat taking questions and generally being an all-around cool guy and uh so i guess from here we'll let um we'll let the crew for the next race handle it stick around to see that and have a good night everyone yep good night everybody